Mr. Biggs. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Thanks, Director Ray, for being here. Um, I'm going to read a quote from a co recent commentator. Quote, we can continue playing compliance whack-a-mole, but at this point it's reasonable to ask whether this sort of large-scale collection on a general warrant model is inherently prone to these problems in a way that resists robust and timely oversight. We've seen this movie before. The court wags its finger at systemic noncompliance by ultimately, but ultimately decides to give the FBI yet another chance, close quote. Of course, this commentator is referring to the uh, opinion from the Fisk Court that which came out in November, which was just recently released uh, it, uh, about April 20th, I believe, April 21st. Um, and in that uh, opinion, the judge said, while the court is concerned about the apparent widespread violation, it lacks sufficient information at this time to assess the adequacy of FBI system changes and training. And so, so um, Congressman, the ranking member, Jim Jordan, and myself wrote to you on May 4th, and we, had, we presented three questions to you. The first one was, please explain why almost a year after the OIG's report about FISA abuses, the FISC found the FBI to still be abusing its warrantless surveillance authority under Section 702. And I, reason, and, and I think we brought that up because in one example, you had at least 40 uh, individuals surveilled um, who had nothing to do with foreign intelligence whatsoever, uh, and that was a finding. The second question was, please provide a detailed accounting of every instance since December 2019 in which the FBI has queried, accessed, otherwise used information obtained pursuant to Section 702 for purposes unrelated to national security. And the third question was, please explain what actions you have taken in the wake of the FISC November 2020 memo opinion in order to prevent uh, and order to prevent the FBI from using its Section 702 authorities to surveil, investigate, or otherwise examine U.S. citizens. So we sent that on May 4th, and then uh, over a month after that last night, we received the response. It wasn't from you, it was from your deputy, uh, or your, uh, your assistant director, excuse me. And that, that letter was primarily focused on question three, which I get, and, and you've mentioned that several times today, and I appreciate the efforts that you're trying to, to, to make the to uh, clean this up or at least uh, provide some kind of effort to, to prevent this, the kind of systemic uh, abuses that we've seen in the past. But Director Ray, I think it's imperative that we understand um, the answers to uh, questions one and two, which I, which I reiterated to you. And you don't have time to answer them all here it would be better if we could have a dialogue, for sure. But um, what I want to know is, can you provide us a detailed accounting of every instance since December 19, in which the FBI's queried, accessed, or otherwise used information obtained by 702 for purposes unrelated to national security? I can look and see if there's more information we can provide you, perhaps uh, in a classified setting. Uh, I will say that uh, the summary uh, that you just gave, it's important, I think, for people not to confuse two different issues. The Inspector General's 2019 report has to do with surveillance. Right. And we've talked about that at great length, including in a prior hearing in front yes. of this committee. The 702, the, the FISC opinion, has to do with querying, which is running searches in a database. There's nothing having to do with surveillance. All that is lawfully collected information. So it had nothing to do with surveillance or anything like that. That does not mean that we don't consider the findings in the Fisk opinion incredibly important, which is why I'm putting in place which all is, these measures. Which is, the, yeah. the, the, the judge found them so troubling that he required now, and I was gonna ask you about this, he requires you to provide a report every quarter about um, minimization, uh, querying, your efforts there. Have you provided the first quarter's report to the FISC? I'd have to check. I know that we deal with the FISC fairly regularly um, and provide all sorts of reports to them. Uh, it's important to note that the court uh, approved our procedures, our minimization procedures, our collection procedures, our querying procedures, did not find misconduct. Didn't find misconduct, right. but, but it, it was still, it found widespread um, impropriety. I'm going to use the word improprieties, but he was very concerned about widespread 
uh, improprieties, and he, that's why he wants the report. One of the going forward is to find out what you guys are doing. So I want to know if, if Congress is going to get a copy of that report. The gentleman's well, time has expired. The witness may answer the question. I'm happy to see what information we can provide you. The court, though, does not speak in terms of improprieties, and I think the court knows how to use that term when that's what it thinks it's found. The gentleman yields back. Christopher Ray was fr flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there, and uh, I think he showed it, especially in this his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm -hmm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C., there is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my 
my former office, you know, the Department of Justice. I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanna prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.